it. The Thermaltake View 71 Snow Edition shows off your build in style with a frosty white paint job and four tempered glass side panels. You also get two pre installed 140mm ring white LED fans, a vertical GPU mount with bracket, and three way radiator support for water cooling. So click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is going to be disappointing. I'm just going to leave with that. Mainly because I know there's been a lot of expectations put out there. If you guys have been following Jay's Two Cents, Gamers Nexus, maybe even my friend Kyle Bitwit a little bit online, you may have seen a bit of the competition going on between us YouTubers when it comes to overclocking NVIDIA's newest graphics cards, the RTX 2080 Ti's. Since most people can't afford these new graphics cards because they're very, very expensive, we have been trying to still bring you some entertaining content by challenging each other to overclocking duels. And I just want to be straightforward from the beginning here. I've never really dabbled in like crazy high-end overclocking. I've done some overclocking, but I'm really pretty inexperienced when it comes to the more advanced stuff. But I do have access to all of the hardware that very few people actually have access to right now, which includes actual RTX 2080 Ti's. I did my initial, initial testing in an overclocking video that I posted last week with this Asus uh, RTX 2080 Ti, and this is their ROG Strix version, which has a custom PCB and everything. And then of course, if you want to improve your performance from a single graphics card, uh, the best thing to do is to go to two-way. And we do still have SLI, but it's not via the traditional SLI bridges. It's via this NVLink bridge. It's a new connection standard, actually more bandwidth via NVLink between the two graphics cards than you get raw natively between a PCI Express slot and your CPU. So that's pretty impressive. I actually got two bridges because I might be testing them with different configurations and different setups. But speaking of my setup, this is what I have been testing on up till now, my little mini ITX uh, system. And this is a Z370 motherboard and there's actually 8700K at the center of this, 16 gigs of RAM. So it's been a solid motherboard and actually the 8700K is what you'd wanna go with for a single graphics card if you're going for the best single card performance. But when it comes to breaking records, you need something that's a little bit more intense than just that setup. So for that reason, yesterday, I set up this test bed that's right here behind me. And although it is already looking quite impressive and it's pretty powerful, it's not quite where it needs to be yet. I'm missing a few key elements, which I'll get to in just a minute, but real quick, let me go over what I have set up right here. So this is the Praxis Wet Bench by Primo Chill, and I've been using this, well, it's been in my background for quite some time with a test bed set up on it, but I had to sort of reconfigure the whole thing and set up a new test bed here. Um, but for cooling at the back, there's a 360 millimeter radiator. There goes Joe. No, no. There goes Joe. Okay. And I had to sort of reconfigure this for my testing right now, but at the back here, we got a 360 millimeter radiator and inside, which you can maybe kind of see, I've got some maglev fans uh, connected up to that. The motherboard is the Asus Rampage 6 Extreme, $650 motherboard, one of the highest end motherboards for X299 that you can get if you're going with a Skylake X processor. For memory, I currently have a four by eight gig G-Skill Trident Z RGB kit, and that's a 3200 speed kit. And here's a place where I'm waiting on an upgrade. Actually, G-Skill is gonna be sending me a very fast kits that I can pair up with this because running fast memory speeds actually just about anywhere that you can get a little bit of extra speed or performance is where you want to add extra speed or performance if possible if you're trying to break overclocking records. My main storage drive is a Samsung 960 Pro which is down there on the Dim.2 riser which is uh, one of the things that comes with this motherboard and then the CPU of course is the 7980XE and whereas you can get better single GP performance with something like the 8700K running at 5 gigahertz or faster you're not going to get top scores on the CPU related tests with that chip because it's a six core 12 thread chip. 7980XE is unlocked for overclocking and that's going to be one of my issues coming up here is how much can I overclock this and it's a 18 core 36 thread processor so quite a bit more CPU processing horsepower than the 8700K has. Now I haven't really done any overclocking with this yet. I just turned on Asus multi-core enhancements. So on a single core, it's getting up to about 4.7 gigahertz. I'm gonna save the overclocking for the future because another thing that you might see here is the EK Supremacy EVO water block. And this is actually mostly an EK water cooling loop, but this is also a lot of the original equipment from the original Arctic Panther build from a couple years ago. This water block is not in the best shape. There's some corrosion down there. I cleaned it out as best as I could, but what I'm expecting soon from EK is a replacement here an X299 monoblock that can cool the CPU as well as all the VRMs, and that should give me a much better solution for overclocking the CPU. 
Finally, the power supply is the Thermal Take 1200 watt Tough Power Grand, which is 80 plus gold. It does have these sort of not that great looking red PCI Express plugs on the end here. I should hopefully be okay with 1200 watts, but I might be actually pushing that a little bit if I'm going for a high end overclock on the CPU. So I might need to swap the power supply in the next coming days as well. And finally, the star of the show is gonna be the RTX 2080 Ti's. Those are doing most of the heavy lift lifting when it comes to graphics processing. This is Gigabyte's triple fan version of the RTX TX 2080 Ti. It's called the Gaming OC 11G. It is not their Aorus lineup, so it does still use the reference PCB, which is actually good. I kind of needed that because this is my other 2080 Ti and that's the reference edition or the founder's edition. And these have a certain Z height, I guess you might say, for the uh, actual NVLink bridge. And as you can maybe tell here, the NVLink bridge for the Founders Edition is a little bit lower. And these are rigid bridges. They're not flexible like uh, we used to have with Crossfire and SLI connectors. So I can't combine these two together. I would need another one of these ASUS cards. So that's the hardware I'm working with right now to get some intro numbers. And again, the things I'm still waiting to update are gonna be CPU block, some faster memory, and then maybe the power supply. We'll see how that goes. But I'm kind of excited just for the time being, even though I know I'm not gonna get that far today, just because I finally get to open up my uh, SLI bridges and set up NVLink SLI for the first time. So let's, let's get going with that. Actually, we need to do a quick fix here before I install the NVLink bridge, and that is because our Gigabyte video card has an updated vBIOS that was just distributed. So I'm using a command prompt here to hopefully locate that and update it. GBT RTX 2080 Ti vBIOS update. Oh good, it worked. And then we get through there, and then we have this N208TGO.F3. This version is not compatible with the version of Windows you're running. I was gonna use NV Flash, which is NVIDIA's utility, which you can just load up from the operating system, but Gigabyte has their own executable, and I'm not 100% sure how it works. Hold on. So I took things a little too seriously. I thought I was gonna have to like boot into DOS or something like that in order to update the vBIOS on this, but no, Gigabyte's utility, you just, you just run the executable and it updates it straight from Windows. So this should now have a higher power limit than it did than it originally shipped with. I'm not exactly sure what that was because I didn't test it before, but what I am gonna try is uh, seeing if I can take that vBIOS and apply it to the Founders Edition RTX 2080 Ti because that might be kind of convenient. Let's see if it lets me. All right, it seemed to be successful, I'm gonna reboot. That should help not just for uh, syncing the cards up because having two cards that are functionally the same is pretty ideal for SLI. Usually it'll just operate at whatever frequency the slower card is operating at, but if I can get a higher power limit on my Founders Edition, Founders Edition card, then that should help too. Now there are some things I can do to improve my graphics scores, uh, stuff like what Jay and Steve have been doing. Of course I could do like what Jay did and get an AC unit and point it directly at everything to keep the ambience down so that Turbo Boost 3.0 can ramp up the clock speeds as high as possible, or I could water cool, um, which is maybe a possibility too in the future. I don't wanna go too far down what I have planned from that perspective, but uh, hopefully more on that very soon. For now though, we did reboot, so let me go ahead and finally install our NVLink bridges. I don't know if I mentioned, but these uh, NVLink SLI bridges are like 80 bucks each. So it was almost $200 for me to get two of these, but at least they have nice packaging, I suppose, if you're gonna pay that much. Uh, but here it is, powering on SLI, NVLink SLI RTX 2080 Ti's for the very first time. I feel so powerful, so strong. Oh, I should plug in the uh, display port. It's important too. I wanna take a picture of this setup and tweet it to Steve and just say, TikTok motherfucker. All right, so we got uh, newest NVIDIA driver loaded, uh, version 4.11.70. By the way, guys, sorry, this is a very reflective screen that we're filming the screen of, so I know it's not the best look at this, but I'm um, just kind of trying to take you guys along for the ride. We did get the notification that we are SLI capable. Oh, and look, it already did it for us. Maximized 3D performance. We have SLI enabled. We're good to go. Now we can start running some benchmarks. So here's an initial run just to give us sort of a baseline. Everything is pretty much at stock. Again, I have multi-core enhancement on the CPU, but that's pretty much it. As for our frequency, 
up here on the top left, we are hitting between around the 1650 range and maybe peaking up in the mid 1700s. So it could definitely be improved there, maintaining higher clock speed. Temperatures weren't horrible, but uh, peaked at about uh, mid to low 60s in one test and got up into the low 70s in another test for both GPUs. Overall score of 10,184, which doesn't seem too, too horrible until I actually compare it to current ongoing scores. So right now we've got Gamers Nexus with a score of 14,491 and Jay apparently just increased his score to 15,000. Jay's still been working on stuff. So I have quite a hill still to climb here. I need to increase my score by 5,000 points still, uh, which should be challenging, but we'll see how I can do. I think for starters though, I'm gonna dial in a modest overclock here, something I think can be stable on both GPUs. And then I'm also gonna go into the NVIDIA control panel uh, to change some of the global settings, as well as the settings specifically for uh, Firestrike that Steve and Jay have been using that was recommended by Kingpin. Then we'll run it again and see what kind of improvement we get there. Why does it say I have a 7900X? Is this the wrong processor? <laughs> I didn't even check that. I think this, this is the wrong processor. Ah! <laughs> how did I do that? I don't know. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> it's a 7900X. <laughs> That's hilarious. That laugh you're it's hearing fine. is Paul going crazy. It's totally fine. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Where the hell is my 7980XE? I just, I've just stumbled upon a discovery here, which I probably should have realized before now. Here's my score. Look, I'm on the leaderboard, breaking 10,000. Uh, it thinks I'm Canadian, just like it originally thought Jay was Canadian, although they fixed that for him recently. I installed a 7900X. What a freaking brain fart that is, but like, I thought it was the 7980XE. I need to find my 7980XE, because right now, this is 7900X. I can at least still try to break the top 10. I think I might have a chance at that. So let's let's go that. So just a few changes here, guys. Uh, I did the adjust image settings and preview uh, with the performance slider, got that over to max, and then under manage 3D settings, I increased the texture filtering quality to high performance. And then on program settings specifically for 3D Mark, I preferred maximum performance for the power management mode. For some reason now, when I load up 3D Mark, it tells me I should disable G-Sync, which is odd because this is not a G-Sync monitor, so I'm just gonna ignore that. Uh, and then for our overclock settings, I'm using the base functional settings that I had for the Founders Edition when I first tried to overclock it, which is a 800, plus 800 on the memory, plus one, it was plus 148 on the GPU, which brought the boost clock up to 1783. And then I also maxed out the voltage slider, maxed out the power slider, as long as that takes, and then did the same for the other GPU too. Uh, power slider, in case you're wondering, is going up to 123%, so um, I'm not sure what that VBIOS update did for us there. Oh, and then I also increased the fan speeds. We're at about 90% on both cards to give us as much cooling as we can for right now. Also, my air conditioner is on, so let's run the test and see what happens. No! It's very bad. It's about to end. Hero, no! That was the distractions. People just want to score. Oh. Okay, wait for it. Come on. Top 10. It didn't crash. That's a good thing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I think I'm like, I think I'm like 20 points from the top 10 or something like that. Right. It was very, very, very close. 11,200, so I'm about 72 points behind. Uh, this probably hasn't updated. My last score of 10,184 is still down there. I'm too close now, so I gotta, I gotta adjust just one or two things. G-Sync is not on. Why is it telling me that G-Sync is on? Frequencies are definitely better, but they're still bouncing around a lot. We're in the 18 and 1900s now, uh, 1905, 1920, etc. Temperatures are still well within range, not a big deal there. The memory seems fine, so let me try to add a little bit more memory juice and see what we can do there. I'm closer. I'm closer. Not as close as I could be. I think Paul's starting to go mad. More fans. Here we go. That's where that's, that's, where that's gonna be. Let's prop it up. Here, Paul. Let me help you out. Yeah. Some more fresh air. This is the intake. This is the exhaust. Come on. Need to break 11 to 11. Come on. Oh, I did it! 11 to 21. 10 points. 10 points over due rules. Pathetic score. 11 of 11 to 11. I now have 11 to 21. 
and I've broken into the top 10 for Time Spy Extreme benchmark results on 3dmark.com, which I think is a perfectly adequate time to end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As I hopefully told you guys from the beginning, I don't think I'm ready to go, especially since I totally thought I had a different CPU installed in this system than I actually do. It's probably kind of a, a first world problem to get my Skylake X CPUs mixed up and install the wrong one. But I will be coming back to this. Again, I do have some more hardware arriving, so I'll follow up uh, later this week. Get the 18 core installed, maybe get some water blocks on the GPUs, see what else I can do to improve that score and give Jay and Steve uh, a bit more competition because they're still battling it out right now. Jay just recently broke 15,000. Gamers Nexus is right behind. But Gamers Nexus is not water cooling their graphics cards yet. So still a lot more to come here. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, hit the thumbs up button and uh, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. If you have any suggestions, any like insider tips on high-end overclocking that might help me out since uh, I'm still kind of just dabbling in this area. But thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.